All right, welcome back. In the last video, we came up with all the stiffness matrices for elements one, two, and three. And in this video, we're gonna come up with the um, structural stiffness matrix. S sub complete. C means complete, okay? And the way we do this is, since we had um, eight degrees of freedom, our S sub C matrix is gonna be um, an eight by eight matrix. And the way these um, rows and columns are gonna be labeled um, is in order from one through our last degree of freedom, which is eight. So on the right side, we're gonna write one, two, three. Those are unrestrained, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on the top, it's gonna be the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And since this is eight by eight matrix, uh, we know that there are gonna be 64 values we need to calculate. And the way we calculate these 64 values is um, we look at one spot. So we come here to S sub one, one, row one, column one, which is this spot right here. S sub one, one is equal to the sum of all k sub one one. In other words, we look up here to our three stiffness matrices and everywhere everywhere we see a, a one one, um, we take those values, we add them together and that becomes our S sub one one. So for K one, we have this row one, we have a column one, it's this two fifth here, right? Let me actually do that in a different color. Two fifth here and then we move on to K two. Uh, we also have a 1-1 one, one here, which is the 1-3, right? Row 1, column 3, one third. And then we move on to K sub 3, and we look for 1-1. One, one. In this case, there is no 1-1 one, one here, so we add 2 fifth plus 1 third gives us S sub 1-1. One, one. Actually, let me undo the circle so it looks nice. So we add um, 2 fifth plus 1 third gives us... 11 fifteenths, right? And that is equal to S sub 1, 1. So we plug in S sub 1, 1 here. So S sub complete, uh, we start here. Um, the first value is gonna be 11 over 15. Then we move on to S sub 1, 2. S sub 1, 2, and again, that's equal to the sum of all K sub 1, 2s, right? So we start again at K sub one, and we look for a one, two. In this case, there is no one, two. There's a row one, but there's no column two. Um, we move on to K two. We have a one, two, is this one sixth. And then we move on to K sub three. There's no one um, sixth, or I'm sorry, there's no one K one, two here. So it's just one sixth, right? So S sub one, two becomes one sixth. That's the value that goes here, right? And then for one three, uh, we look for a one three in all of the three K sub matrices, right? So um, in this case, we actually don't have any one three, right? In case of one, there's no one three. In case of two, there's no one three. And in case of three, there's no one three. So that means S sub one three is zero. We plug in a zero here. Then we move on to S sub one four. Uh, one four, if we look at K sub one, we have a one row one, uh, column four, we have this one fifth here, right? And then we move on to K sub two, we have a one, but no fifth column, right? So K sub three, we have nothing, no one five, I'm sorry, one four. So that means uh, S sub one four is um, one fifth, right? S sub one four is one fifth, and that is this value right here, right? So this previous value is one three, right? One three, one two, one one, this is one four. So we go and do this um, 60 more times because we figured out four of the values and we need 64 of them, right? 64 of them. Um, and we keep doing that uh, 60 more times and we get our S sub complete matrix, which is this matrix uh, right 
here. You can see that that fits, right? So this matrix, um, this matrix is special because this matrix actually has four sub matrices within this matrix, okay? And before I get into those, I'm actually going to label the rows and columns according to our degrees of freedom. We're going to have row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then up here, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Uh, let me just make this a little bit smaller so we can fit this on the screen. Uh, right there is good, right? We just scale it down a bit. And I'm going to move it uh, towards the left side of the screen. Now, so we have this matrix, this S subcomplete matrix. I'm actually going to draw two lines. And these lines are going to be positioned um, in between the last unrestrained value, or that last unrestrained degree of freedom, and the last, or the first restrained degree of freedom. So in this case, it's going to be 3 and 4, right? Green and red. And draw a line right down the middle here. Or not the middle, between 3 and 4. And then for row, uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw a line between the last unrestrained and the first restrained, which is between this 3 and 4. So I'm going to draw a line there. Now, this matrix here, right, this sub-matrix right here, this, oops, um, do that. So this sub-matrix right here, I'm going to call that matrix S sub U U, which stands for unrestrained rows, unrestrained columns, U U. This matrix right here, is going to be S sub U R, unrestrained row, restrained column. And then down here, this matrix is going to be called S sub um, R U, right? Restrained rows, it's four, five, six, seven, eight. And then unrestrained columns, one, two, three. And then finally, this matrix here, this matrix right here, is going to be S sub uh, RR for restrained rows, restrained columns. So this is our S sub complete matrix. Um, in each of these four matrices, since they were all K values, and we pulled out um, an EI for the K values, and actually I made a mistake here, I should have corrected this a lot sooner, but um, EI is pulled out of all these K matrices, right? EI, EI. Um, so each one of these matrices we can pull out an EI from, right? So this is our S subcomplete matrix. Um, we'll use this later on in some of our equations. Um, and in the next video, we'll go ahead and start doing our joint load diagram and our internal reaction diagram. All right, so see you then.